going on kids? Pastor Jacob here with another Life Group video. Hope you're all having a wonderful week. Last week we explored the story of Ruth and Naomi and how God watched over them as they traveled back to Bethlehem. God isn't done taking care of Ruth and Naomi though. Today we're going to finish exploring the story of Ruth and how God continued to provide for her. We're in Ruth chapter 3 and 4 today. So take a minute and find Ruth chapter 3 and 4. Last week, Naomi and Ruth had lost just about everything. Things were not looking very great for this family. They traveled back to Bethlehem in hopes of finding someone to help them. Ruth met a man named Boaz who let Ruth gather food from his field and it helped feed Ruth and Naomi. But Boaz was more than just a nice man. He was actually a relative of Naomi's. This was a really big deal. Back in this time, if a man died, Usually, another man of the closest relationship would marry the wife of the man who died. This was to make sure that she was well taken care of and that she didn't lose her home or her property. Naomi knew this, and she made a plan for Ruth. She told Ruth to get her nicest clothes and to go to Boaz and ask him to be the family redeemer. Ruth followed the plan, and Boaz agreed. But he said that there was someone who was closer in relation meaning that this person needed to be asked first. The next morning, Boaz went to the city gates and he waited for the other man to show up. When the man finally came, Boaz pulled him aside and gathered some of the city's elders. Boaz told him about Ruth and Naomi's situation and how Naomi was gonna to have to sell some land if her redeemer didn't step up. After some discussion, the men decided to not be the family redeemer and let Boaz be the redeemer for Ruth and Naomi. But do you know what they used to seal this deal? Today, we'll sign a contract and there's a whole bunch of paperwork that goes into making an agreement. But back in this time, they sealed a deal with a shoe. The man who gave up his right to be the redeemer gave Boaz his sandal. Crazy, I know. With the legal stuff all taken care of and sandals given, Boaz went to Ruth and he married her, and he was able to buy the land for the family. Boaz was called a family redeemer. Do you know what a redeemer is? To redeem something means basically to buy it back or repurchase, but it also means to restore or make a payment for something and bring it out of captivity. Boaz redeemed Naomi and Ruth's family by buying the land that they were going to lose. And then eventually Ruth and Boaz would go on and have a baby. And this baby would carry on the family line of the husband who died. I know there are a lot of strange details in this story and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. That's okay. But what this story really does is it shows us an example of a redeemer. When Jesus came to earth and he died on the cross for our sins, what Jesus did was that he became a redeemer for us. We are trapped by our sin, and we deserve to be punished because of our sin. But Jesus took our punishment by dying on the cross, and he redeemed us. He bought us back from our captivity with sin and back into freedom with God. The story of Ruth and Boaz gives us such a great example of how God cares for us and loves us. Ruth was a Moabite. She wasn't even a person of Israel, but God still loved her and still looked out for her. Ruth was even a great grandma for someone super important. Ruth and Boaz's son was named Obed, who would be the grandfather of King David, the David who fought Goliath and wrote a whole bunch of the Psalms. It's so cool to see how God used the story of Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz to show how much he loves us, to show an example of Jesus being a redeemer for us, and played a role and eventually the family line of Jesus. I've loved exploring this story with you all, and I cannot wait to dive into next week's lesson. For now, let's jump into our memories. It's memory verse time. Who remembers where to find our memory verse for the month of May? Our verse is in the book of Ephesians, and is chapter two, verses eight and nine. Ephesians is in the New Testament and it comes after the book of Galatians and before the book of Philippians. 
It's a small book, so take your time looking for it. And go and find Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Let's practice our verse together. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may rest. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Great job. Now we're going to learn some emotions to go along with them. And we're going to break these down into small chunks because this is a pretty long verse. So let's start with the first part of our verse. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Got it? Let's try that one more time. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Great job. Now let's get to the next part. Here's the second part. Take your hands like this. And this is not your own doing. Moving your hands like this is do. So doing and then not We're shaking our hand. This is not our own doing. But it's a gift. Like we're giving someone a gift. It is a gift from God. All right, let's say that one more time. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. All right, time for the last part. Okay, third part. Not a result. All right, so we're shaking our head. Not a result of works. Because it's not what we do. It's not a result of works. So that no one, no one may boast. You point your thumbs that you like. You're saying, yeah, me. No one may boast. Let's put this whole verse together. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And it's not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Great job. These motions are a little bit harder. There's a whole lot more of them than there were last month. So you're probably going to have to spend some more time working on it, trying to remember what they are and how this verse goes. But you can do it. I know you can. Now, let's jump into craft time. It's craft time. For our craft today, you'll need to gather a piece of paper, a black marker, and then a whole bunch of other colored pencils or colored markers. Take a minute and gather your supplies. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna take your blank sheet of paper and you wanna get your black marker. You're gonna have your sheet horizontal like this and you're gonna start writing block letters of your name, one on top of the other. So at the very bottom, you can kinda of see it. I have my J, there's an A, C, O, and then B. It may be a little hard for you to see, but all my letters are right there. Once you stack all your letters on top of it, you see that you have this really neat pattern that pops up. And everyone's name is gonna look a little bit different because we all have different names. We're gonna write it differently. You're gonna take your different colors and start filling in all the different white spots. And you can start creating this really pretty mosaic like I've started to create here. This will be a great craft for you to do. And as you do, and you think to remember that as you're writing your name, that you were created specially for you. God cares about you and God loves you deeply. Ruth was someone that most people in Israel wouldn't have think God cared about. They thought God only cared about the people of Israel, but God cared deeply for Ruth. So as you're writing your name, remember, you're like Ruth. God keep, deeply cares for you and loves you. He's watching over you and he's protecting you. I hope you guys have fun making your name mosaic craft and, and I can't wait to see how colorful and pretty they turn out to look. Hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye.